I produce something about the same time every morning. Coffee. Come on, people, get your mind out the gutter. Hey, Power Director peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you're looking for from Power Director University. Today, we're going to be making a video on producing or exporting videos using Power Director 16. Let me know in the comment section below what preset or what file format you use when you produce your videos. Let's jump into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 16. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. Let's produce something lovely, people. I know about four months ago, I gave you guys a tutorial on how to produce videos. So today, I'm just gonna break down my workflow and tell you about what I choose, but I'm also gonna give you a little bonus and give you some information on each one of these file formats and what they can be used for to help you out a little bit, all right? But I'm not gonna go in depth because I just did a video on a lot of this stuff. So let's get into the workflow and show you how I get down. So I'm on a produce tab and under the produce tab, I'm on standard 2D. I don't make 3D videos. I don't make videos for devices and I don't upload videos online directly from the software. When I upload videos to YouTube, I create a file here using the standard 2D file of my choice. And then I go to YouTube or Facebook and I upload directly on their site. So that's how I get down. Underneath that, we got Intelligent SVRT, but we need to be focusing on the file formats. So I'm gonna give you a breakdown of all these file formats and then I'll tell you about the one that I use most. The first one that we got on here is AVI. So if you're looking for a file format with less compression that can be played on most devices and websites, and you don't mind standard definition, then AVI might be a good choice for you. It's an older format, um, but it's still used a lot of different places online and you can see it all over the place because of its flexibility and compatibility. Next we have MPEG-2. If you wanna create a DVD, this is the file format for you. You can select some higher resolutions and standard def using this, but the standard definitions all the way up to 720, those are the MPEG-2 formats that you use for DVDs. Now, MPEG-2 has a low compression rate and high quality, which results in large file sizes. So if you're looking to save some time producing files and you wanna save some space on your hard drive, then MPEG-2 may not be the right format for you. But if you got time to spare and plenty of hard drive space, and you're trying to save files that you wanna put onto a DVD later, MPEG-2 is probably your option. Next we got Windows Media. So Windows Media was of course made by Microsoft and it's a format that was used to replace AVI. So the size of the WMV files makes them a popular format for streaming video over the internet. Also, because it's owned by Windows, if you're looking to play a video on an older version of an Office product, like you wanna play a, a video on an older version of PowerPoint, then WMV is one of the few formats that support it for that. So if you're looking to play your video on a wide variety of devices, the WMV format isn't really the best choice, but if you're looking for sticking to Windows or players that play Windows files or even older versions of Office, then WMV should be the way to go. Next, we got XAVCS. Now, this is a file format found on a lot of the Sony cameras. Um, one of the popular cameras that it's on right now is the Sony A7S. This file format offers lower compression than formats like uh, 
ProRes or DNX HD, but it creates files that are similar in quality to ProRes and DNX HD. So it's a great format for high quality files. Now, producing an XAVC file can cause some compatibility issues with other applications because some applications uh, don't accept these type of files yet. So if you're looking for something for a high quality, like you want to broadcast some beautiful 4K footage on your TV or your projector, then rolling with the XAVCS format could be a great choice for you. Next, we got H.264, and this is one of the most common video codecs being used today. It is more efficient for compression than those MPEG-2 files, and it even delivers higher quality than those files. So if you want to create uh, HD or higher resolution content for things like your Blu-ray disc or online video while minimizing the file size, this is a very reliable option for that. Next, we got H.265 HEVC. Now, this is the successor to H.264, and it offers even better compression than H.264. So the image quality and smaller file size makes it one of the favorites for producing uh, 4K files. A lot of people use this for 4K. Now, there isn't a lot of support for H.265 yet, so... Using it could lead to some compatibility issues and you might not be able to play your file on some devices. But if you want that 4K love, that 4K beauty in a small package that's manageable and you're willing to test the compatibility waters, then H.265 is your best bet. And those are all of the file formats that you need to know about. Now, which one do I use? Well, because a lot of my videos are on YouTube and I don't do a lot of 4K stuff, I use H.264 the most. Uh, this is, to me, the most reliable as far as compatibility goes, and the image quality is fantastic, and the compression helps to keep down the file size, so this is the one that I use. I also uh, use the MP4, file extension when I'm using this. And I usually will go with something like uh, 1920 by 1080, uh, 24P. Of course, I do United States NTSC because that's where I'm at. That's the region that I live in. I'm not gonna go into all this other stuff because like I said, I go over these things in the other video and I don't feel like duplicating my efforts today, okay? But once I get all this stuff done, just go ahead and choose the folder that we want to export to. Give our file a name here, choose the folder, click save. And then when we're done, we click start and produce away. That's my workflow for producing files and a little bonus to tell you about which one of these files does what and what type of situations you should use them in. Hope you learned something new today. All right, Power Director peeps, that's it. I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of our subscribers, Gaming Games. Gaming Games makes gameplay videos on their YouTube channel. So if you want to check out the latest games or you just want to see some hot gameplay videos, go on over to their channel. Check out a couple of their videos. And if you're feeling what they're dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you guys want to get a shout out like Gaming Games did, make sure you head over to the video description and complete our shout out request form. If you got any tutorials you want us to make, head over to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk, you want to chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do, click on the bell. When you click on the bell, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube, and that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.